Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered and <laughs> the Two Onions Podcast with Danny Daniels. <laughs> oh, it's your first time doing an intro. I know. This is my first intro. I feel so good. Oh, my gosh. We should probably also say your name as well because you're also part of the podcast, right? Vic? Yeah, I usually, oh, I'm Vic. Yeah, I'm just Vic. <laughs> <laughs> I usually open it up and I'm like, welcome to the Two Onions Podcast. I'm Danny Daniels, and that's Vic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like Garth in, in Wayne's world, yeah, you know, and as so always funny. Garth. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you guys? It's so good to see you guys. It's good I to see you too. too. Yeah, we were, we were, we were just talking. We were expecting to see you a few months ago and then uh, the world exploded. I know. I know. I was going to fly out to New York and I was going to do a podcast with Asa and then the dopey podcast and then you guys and just, you know, try to um, do some promo stuff before, the baby got me on lockdown, but then the pandemic got me on lockdown yeah, before exactly. that happened. So, how, okay. So I'm in LA, you guys are in New York. Mm -hmm. Um, the pandemic has been a big deal in both cities, but it's yeah. been from what I understand worse in New York. Like you guys have had stricter restrictions, right? Yeah. We, I mean, yeah. Technically, we're open, but we're not. Uh, they just announced today that we go into phase two on Monday, which mm -hmm. is really like the first time things start opening up, which allows outdoor seating at restaurants um, and only restaurants that serve food or those 50 percent food. And, and, and it allows people to start going back to the office. But that's that's really the first time people will be able to get out of the house since March 22nd, March yeah. 15th, somewhere around there. It's crazy. Yeah. So. Were you guys um, like on complete? Because from what I understood, you guys were like on complete lockdown. Like you couldn't even go outside for a walk. Is that true? No, no. We were able to go out for walks. You were able to walk your dog. You were able to go okay. out for walks and stuff like that. But um, we weren't. We weren't like shut in the house. But there's nothing. To, there's nothing to do. I mean, New York City. You know, there's no restaurants, no bars, no Broadway, no nothing. So technically, we were pretty much locked in our houses because there was yeah. no place to go. You know, the liquor stores and the bodegas, that was about all that was open. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you guys, but my husband has been drinking significantly more during <laughs> this pandemic. It's been uh, noticeable. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to say we brought I mean, a lot of bottles back from scotch and we yeah. depleted a lot of them, but we may have depleted a I lot always, of scotch bottles. I'm always drinking, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... How was that for your relationship? Like you guys have been together for a while. I know you guys have a great relationship. Um, were you ever tested at any time? Did you ever get to a point where you're like, I am so sick of this other person that I'm stuck with. You know, I can't wait to get out and get away. No. Uh, yeah, honestly, no. We, 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 we had a couple of days where we were snippy at each other, but those were mostly from stuff that came from the outside, not from us being around each other. We're, we're really used to being around each other. So it wasn't that big, at least for me, it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. Um, the only thing that we are now at the point where being locked in a small apartment in New York, we're stir crazy to go outside, not with each other, but to just get the hell out of this place. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So when phase two opens, do you guys, are you guys going to go out to a restaurant to eat? Like, do you, have you have plans? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's not, really worth dealing with all the bullshit. I, mm. I hate to sound like that, but like, it's, un it's a nightmare. I mean, you're, you're talking about like restaurants that are already the size of a closet, only allowing like half capacity or outside seating. So you're talking about like two tables. So good luck even getting into a restaurant, even mm. if you wanted to. Yeah. So it's like, I'm 50, 50, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not concerned about the virus. Um, I'm wondering how many restaurants are even going to be able to survive. I mean, yeah. these restaurants cannot survive in New York on 50% capacity. They can barely survive on 100% capacity. So we're going to lose a lot of good places. Yeah. I saw this article the other day that somebody posted about how the pandemic is not only going to you know, probably shut down a lot of restaurants, but just change the nature of neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, and like the the culture because these restaurants that have been, you know, I mean, you know, you're in you're in New York, but I would imagine that that a lot of these restaurants have been around for a long time, right? Yeah. Very and long. Kind time. of like yeah. define the neighborhood. So 
It sucks so bad. Interesting to see what happens, especially in New York, because the rents are so high. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of, I mean, sure. Like, you know, just like LA, it's like, you have a lot of overhead. Mm -hmm. And so if you're half open, it's like, is it even worth it to open your restaurant because you have to staff everyone because it just like, you know, meal costs, food costs, you know, keeping the lights on, is it worth it? Yeah. So. Yeah. My brother-in-law opened, um, he like completely redid, redid this kind of historic bar and restaurant like near downtown LA and yeah, Lincoln like right Heights. Right before the shutdown, right? Right before, six yeah. weeks before the airliner. Beautiful. They put two years, they put all this money into it. Um, it's just like absolutely gorgeous. And it was finally starting to get really full. I was going to do my first live podcast there. They were having, they were booked like every night because they have like a mini stage upstairs, which is super cool. Oh, really so cool. they had like comedy shows and all this stuff. And they were really on a roll. And then this pandemic just completely shut them down. And and I was talking to him and, and he said, you know what you just said? He was like, I don't know that it's worth it to open up at half capacity because I still have to buy all like the food, all the liquor, you know, my, my wait staff doesn't feel comfortable coming back yet. So he's not yeah. going to open. And you have to guess like how much food do you buy? If you're half capacity, do you buy half? It's just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did go out to you. Pre, I know you saw the picture on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I did go out to lunch with Cherie Deville and Aliyah Love and Mike Quasar. Um, and, uh, they're all their significant others. But um, we went out and ate in Westlake, which is so different than where we live here in Culver City, because like here in Culver City, like everyone wears masks, right? Yeah, and right. obviously there's a lot less space than there is in, in Westlake. We went to Westlake. There wasn't that like literally a single person wearing ma- a mask. Like yeah, that's what I was gonna zero. Ask you. When I saw the picture, I'm like, first of all, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> And like, did they space the tables out or were they just like, whatever? I think they were spaced out, but I, it didn't feel like it was, it wasn't always like that. It was such a huge, they had such a large outdoor area, Mm -hmm. um, that I think that it was easy to space the tables out like six feet apart and still fill every table. Um, it was just a really large space. So, but yeah, because from my understanding, it was like, you wear a mask when you go and you sit down at the restaurant and then you take it off to eat. And then if you like get up to go to the bathroom, you put it back on. Fucking no one was wearing it. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I th- I, you know what? I think people are over it. I think they realize if you're under the age of 50, you're probably not going to be in trouble. And I, th- I honestly believe you got a whole bunch of people who just want to get it. Just let me yeah. get it. So I have the immunity and I'm done with this shit, you know? And that's, yeah. that's, I think where we are. Four months locked down, man. That's mm-hmm. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. They call it quarantine fatigue. Yeah. yeah. What was it like having someone bring you food to your table and ask you what you wanted to eat? Well, my husband does that for me almost every night. Oh, yeah. cute. <laughs> he's, he's a good man. Oh we, my God, we love you him. and Cherie are the same. <laughs> Wait, doesn't Vic cook for you all the time? I always see these like videos of him. Oh, like, I used to cook. I thought he was order for you. I oh, no. Like, like oh, cook. No. Yeah. no, he always no, no, cooks. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I do yeah. most of the cooking. He does all of the, yeah, I've been very spoiled. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I don't know if you, have you ever tried to do cooking? Now that like he's kind of taken on that mantle and is it kind of annoying because does he micromanage you a little bit? Yes. And it's so <laughs> obnoxious and he gets so pissy if I cook. Like, yeah. I'm like, just don't bother. I don't, yeah, I, I know I, my I like, limitations. I, I like cooking because like he does Italian. Like I like cooking my own stuff. If I'm craving something, he's like, why are you cooking? I'm like, because I also enjoy it. <laughs> why are you cutting it like that? I'm like, get the, go away. <laughs> Um, like Gordon Ramsay of husbands, I'm like get yeah. out of here. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I feel you on that. Like, what you <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I'm happy. I'm like fine. You can just cook. My mom even stopped um, cooking because my husband he always does the barbecuing. You know, when we go up and see them, and then my sister's husband is like a chef, so he always does all the cooking when he goes up as well. So. My mom literally never cooks anymore. I don't like the blame holidays. Her. Yeah, yeah, the holidays are just those two. It's 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 awesome actually. How has it been for you on lockdown? Like, I mean, like work wise, um, wise. Yeah, it's been marvelous. <laughs> I I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like don't really want to go back to work that much. Um, I just, no, I know I'll get bored. I mean, 
we're talking actually now about setting up like Playboy wants me to do a shoot and I want to finish my, try to finish my art book. Mm -hmm. So I do want to go back and, and maybe I do want to shoot again. I do, but I, I definitely don't want to shoot at the capacity that I was doing before. I definitely don't want to do 18 hour days anymore for like not that much money. Um, so I don't want to do that, but I feel like I have gotten used to not having to work like crazy long days and it feels weird and I feel guilty about it. So I don't know. Like, do you, what is like, I've, as long as I've known you, you like never take time off. Ever. I know. So I it's know. like, what is time off for you? Like, Well, so I don't set my alarm in the morning, which is amazing, but I still like, my husband brings me coffee at like 7.30 in the morning and he puts it on my bed. And then I get up and I go, my uh, laptop. Uh, but not at 7.30 because absolutely not. <laughs> I Because he usually gets up and starts working at six because he works at a law firm that's in Houston. So they start early. Um, but uh and then, yeah, I like just get on my laptop and, you know, like check emails and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really been a wonderful opportunity. Actually, it's been a blessing for me to be able to focus on marketing and working on my podcast and my YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, I got really lucky that I got my YouTube channel monetized like right before quarantine. So, and I also signed um, a deal with a multi-channel network who's been helping me like build my audience and and figure out how the YouTube algorithm works. There's like a lot to it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's complicated. Have yeah, you felt like more creative because you're not as cramming in as much work. Uh, in terms of the podcast, for sure. Like I feel because a lot of times, you know, I would go in and I would do an interview and I would be coming off like a three day you know, in a back-to-back -back shoe, I'd be really tired. I would have done zero research on my guest and I would come in and just be like, wing it, you know? <laughs> so, hey, I, what's going on? Yeah, what, yeah. What's that thing you did that. last week? Yeah. yeah, like, who are you? What are you doing here? Do I know you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> have I shot you? <laughs> How'd you get in here? Who let you in? <laughs> So, so yeah, it's been a really great opportunity for that. And we've, um, you know, I've started doing these live chats, which have been really wonderful. Um, I found that my audience really enjoys being able to interact and like ask mm -hmm. questions of my guests. And that's actually really helped me with like my Patreon and, um, just my audience in general. Like I think people feel more connected to the show. And so I've noticed a big jump in that. So that's been really, really cool. So yeah, it's been, it's been really nice to be honest. Um, it makes me want to be more independent yeah. and, um, shoot more for myself and don't get me wrong. I love the clients that I shoot for. Um, like, you know, twisties has been so good to me and I will continue to work for them. Um, you know, Playboy is great, but I think a lot of the other clients that I was shooting for here and there, I probably won't continue to do that. So do you think that like you would, because like so many people like myself included are doing like OnlyFans, their own website, mm -hmm. you know, a premium something. Do you think you would like end up shooting for like individual talent as opposed to like a company? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if talent asked me to shoot them, I would, I, ha you know, I've, I've shot, um, the only gang bangs I've ever shot has been for talent. <laughs> Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I shot a gay thing for Riley. It's kind of bizarre. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know what I think it is? Like most client, most people know, most companies know to not, that I don't generally shoot really hardcore stuff. Yeah. So if they want like a double anal scene, like they're not going to call me because it's not really yeah. a thing. Mm -hmm. So, and the clients that I work for generally don't shoot that kind of stuff. Like Twisties doesn't really shoot. I mean, yeah. now they only shoot lesbian porn, so they definitely don't shoot that stuff. Oh, they're back to just lesbian? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. They've like completely changed their whole thing and it's, cool. it's pro girl that. only now. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice because, um, it gives it, it makes it a much different website than all the other mind geek brands, you know, browsers, digital playground, they were all kind of starting to look the same. Um, yeah. so, so yeah, they've really changed the direction, um, of their site and I, I love it. So, um, 
what the fuck was I saying? Lady gangbangs. Lady <laughs> gangbangs. Gang gang how could I forget <laughs> that we were talking about gangbangs? I'm just yeah, how could you forget that? that? Anytime someone's like, what was I talking about? I'm just going to be like, you were talking about gangbangs. Gang you know? yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can get, maybe we can get like a U.S. senator on and we can be like, you were talking about gangbangs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So yeah. So the few gangbangs that I have shot, uh, I had, I shot a Christmas gangbang for Riley Reed, which was like my favorite day ever because Steve Holmes tied like a bow around his penis, the bottom of his penis, like a present and kept it on the whole fucking scene. (laughs) And it stayed on the whole scene. It was amazing. And all the guys wore like Christmas hats and you know how I feel about Christmas. I love this. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> and then I shot a gangbang for Joanna Angel. Um, I shot just the pictures, to be fair. I didn't shoot the video. Um, Mike Quasar ended up shooting the video. But that was really oh, fun. I can't and- even imagine Mike Quasar shooting a gangbang. Like, what? <laughs> He, it's, it's gotta he requ- that's got to require a fifth of vodka. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he just presses record and then just hangs his head in shame. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I shot one for Lisa Ann and, um, and I like shooting, like, I don't mind shooting gangbangs at all, but what I really enjoy is shooting that kind of content for the models because I know that they're completely in control. It's their production. They're paying for it. They're choosing the guys. They're setting their boundaries. So I never feel like I'm in a position where I'm, making a girl do something maybe that yeah. she's not entirely comfortable You're not trying to like pump up a scene and be like, hey, can you maybe like put two dicks in your ass? Instead of going, yeah. this is my website. I'm putting all the dicks in my butt right now. Let's all the it. dicks. Yeah. <laughs> she's not going to half-ass a day because yeah. it's for herself. It's a, it's a full-ass <laughs> day, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was so funny. So with Lisa Ann, um, you know, she's such a boss. Like it was so funny shooting her. There was this one guy – Cause she's so on it, you know, like, and I can even tell when I'm shooting, like she's counting in her head. She's like, okay, there's six dicks here. Like they better all be in frame, you know? And she's like, she's looking around for all the dicks, like making sure that she's like hitting all the points. And there was this one guy that was like struggling a little bit and she totally noticed. And you know how like sometimes during a gangbang, if a guy's struggling, he'll kind of like back out of the frame yeah. a little bit yeah, to like, like go in the corner and like jump go in the corner the and, and like he kind of kept doing that. <laughs> she got so pissed. And she was like, I'm paying for six dicks. I want six dicks in the frame. I want that dick in my mouth. I'm paying a lot of money for that dick. Bring that fucking dick over here. I was like, I am not surprised. Not even Lisa. a little bit. Yeah, no. And <laughs> that's why Lisa Ann honest, has moved to New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if I did a gangbang, I'd probably be in like the same realm. Yeah. Be, like, coaching and screaming at all the dicks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're, and she was hundred percent right. She's paying for that dick. Like, that I want dick. A full dick. If I'm paying for it. Yeah. Not half. You, like, a, I am I going to pay you a half dick rate? Yeah. <laughs> Now you learn the struggle of every production company and director in America, right? In oh. porn. <laughs> I want yeah. all the dicks, damn it. Also, I know. Like, if you're like a male performer and you want me to convince you that you're the most handsome man and that I don't want, don't want to do anything but fuck you, like I am not the person to fuck you. <laughs> I'm yeah. the one that's like, bro, are you getting your dick up? I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. We're getting checks and we're out. Like, yeah. don't fuck around. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> I don't want your number. Suck it in a mouth. So, so speaking of, so Danny, you are now and have been for a few years uh, shooting content exclusively for yourself. Yeah, almost four years now. Four years wow, in August. Crazy. Yeah. So, how has it been? Like, okay, so here's my question: What do you? Is there anything that you miss about working like in the porn industry for all the studios? Um, that you used to work for and what do you definitely not miss? Um, I don't miss, or I miss like shooting. Like I loved acting and I loved doing features and I loved like high end productions. That was really fun for me. So I miss doing stuff like when I did like horror wall street for browsers and it was like this huge production. Like that was oh my cool. gosh. I, I forgot about that. And- I forgot about that. Yeah. And yeah. like, um, I don't miss anything else. <laughs> 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 no it was i mean like it was cool I, i'm not saying that in like a negative way but that's literally the only thing i missed 
because now I get to shoot, you know, anything else I want to do. And I shoot at home. I shoot whatever I feel like, which is great. I don't have to get up and be like, fuck, I really don't want to play a stepmom today. I want to like just masturbate with a dildo furiously. (laughs) And then I get to do that, you know? So yeah. Being able to like produce my own content and do what I love has been great. Um, I was afraid that like my fan base would kind of like trail off, but if anything, I've like doubled or tripled my fan base because I'm now doing what I enjoy. And then like the fans that I have brought in also enjoy instead of just like doing everything and blanketing it. It's like, I like jerk off instruction. I like POV. I like reality porn. I like amateur porn. And then like all those guys and girls are like, oh, hey, like we like that too. And they all like, you know. Yeah. So, but I mean, I miss, I miss my friends. I miss the people and stuff like that. But like I talk to them. So, you know. Yeah. 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 I, I think also too, these platforms that you have um, really allow a personal connection between you and your fans that didn't exist when you were doing like a big browsers movie, you know, they saw Danny is the horror of wall street. They didn't get to see Danny, like who she really is and, and your full personality. And so. even like, I like do like Q and A's and stuff and I'll be like, Hey, if you have ideas for stuff, like write to me. And a lot of people do. And a lot of the time I'm like, that sounds rad. Like I'll do that, which is just something I didn't think of. Right. So that's been, you know, really, really nice. You must get but- really stupid ideas though, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's some golden ones. Yes, yeah, there's some definite winners, yeah. <laughs> but I don't, I mean, like, it's nice too because I can pump out, you know, three scenes a day mm-hmm. because I'm working for myself because I'm on my own time. I don't have to be on set for 12 hours and be like, okay, you know. So shortening my days, you know, connecting with my fans. But I'm not, I don't, I'm not, not, how do I, I'm not, missing porn like oh fuck porn because i love shooting for browsers and reality kings and digital playground and doing these things but like and you obviously i love shooting with you those are like the best days ever um but i just i like you know waking up and being doing it from home it's nice to be your own boss yeah i mean there's just you know what i mean there's nothing better yeah I mean, you, you are, you, you're basically the corner of your own destiny at that point. Mm-hmm. It's how much you work now, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can work as hard as I want for any company. I'm only going to get a certain amount, but if I work as hard as I want for me or, you know, that, then, then it's yours. It's, yeah. You control it. But also too, you have to be a hustler in order to survive yes. at that. Like, I think the mistake that a lot of girls make is that they are like, oh, I can just work for myself and start an OnlyFans and like support myself. But it's like, if you're not going to do the work yeah. and do the hustle and do the marketing, you're not, you're not going to be able to survive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, so, think, I think people think like, oh, okay, I can shoot a scene in two hours and then my day is done. It's like, no, I have emails. I have to upload. I have to do my website. I have to answer my fans. I have to absolutely. communicate. I have to promote it. I have to advertise it. So it's yeah. like that you're doing the back end as well, which is good, but it's, yeah, it's, more work on my plate, but it's also things I enjoy. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful I, that I did it when I did, or I started doing it when I did, because when lockdown happened, everyone's like, what are you, how have you been? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing the same shit. <laughs> like, I was going to say your life probably didn't change that much. No. You know, the only difference is, like, is I didn't walk down the block to work. That was about yeah, to like, The only difference is like, I have to tell Nick to like, shut up for a couple hours so I can shoot. Like, that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, I just, we're going to go to a commercial break in a second, but I just quickly want to comment. I just realized that you're wearing a Ministry of Silly Walks shirt. I am. <laughs> and that yeah. is so fucking, like, I love the shout out to Monty Python right there. My, my, I, I actually have a boatload of Monty Python shirt. I was a huge fan for as long as I can remember. So, yeah. What's your favorite Monty Python movie? Movie's probably Holy Grail. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, Life Life of Brian is up there too. I love Life of Brian, but the Life of Brian know, is Brian good. Is, yeah. But there's some, there's no beating. There's just so many classic moments uh, in Quest for the Holy I, I Grail. I actually, I got her to watch it for the first time. I watched it on lockdown during lockdown, I've and now she just keeps it watching it on repeat. Yeah, she'd never seen it. Before. I didn't grow up watching television or movies, so like yeah. I haven't seen anything. So like you felt like make I just watched Caddyshack for the first time. Like I just watched, you know, yeah. Monty Python, yeah. Holy Grail. 
I did you it. um just because some watery tart <laughs> <laughs> that's no there's no basis of government yeah. so good yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah don't get me started i'll start quoting it it'll be really <laughs> boring for people um have you seen any of the other like Monty Python skits? Like the dead parrot's probably one of my favorite ones. I haven't seen the dead parrot. Oh, no. the dead this, parrot. This, this so one's good. probably one of my favorite. That and I used to love No One Expects the Spanish Inquisition. I actually yes. have that t-shirt too. I actually have that t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Or the uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Say no more, say no more. I say actually, no more, I say actually no more. wore, I actually wore the No One Expects the Spanish Inquisition t-shirt in Spain. <laughs> I wore it in Spain. <laughs> Somebody was yelling at me the entire time, like, are you really going to wear that? Yeah. I'm gonna... <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break uh, and we will be right back. Summer is here and Manscaped is here to help you level up your full body grooming game. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer. It's cordless. It's waterproof, and it is guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts. And if you want to use it on your chest hair, it actually has different settings so you can get the perfect length, whether or not you're the kind of guy who likes to be a little bearish or maybe actually wants a bare chest, literally. You can get all of this inside the perfect package. Well, you will find the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, as well as the Crop Reviver, a testy toner that is designed to give you a pep in your step. If you subscribe to the perfect package, you will get a blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. So what are you waiting for? Make this your best and most hairless summer ever. Go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Okay. So we're back. So quickly, I want to ask you, Danny, do you remember, I think we talked about this the last time we did a podcast together, or we at least talked about it at some point. Do you remember the scat caviar guy? The one who wanted to eat your poop? Yes. Yeah. So I told that story and I thought I was very special and that he only wanted to eat my poop. And, uh, he, you know, he, it's a very well written letter about yeah. how he wants to meet you at a hotel and he wants mm -hmm. you to poop into like a silver dish and pee into, pee into a champagne flute and, um, how he wants to taste your toilet treats and your scat caviar <laughs> with like a silver spoon. And I told you that story and you were like, oh yeah, I got an email from that guy. I was like, oh. Yeah. You thought you were this. I remember you thought you were special, and I was like, "You're not the only one who saw someone on stage." I mean, I wasn't gonna do it, but I still wanted to know that, like, I was the only one whose poop he wanted <laughs> I to have eat. Magical poops. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, he wrote back to me like a month ago, and he asked me because I said no. Yeah. Um, but I said it like kindly because I was like, "Okay, I don't want to kink shame this guy, but like, there's no way I'm gonna do this." So I said no, and then he came back to me, and he was like, I just want to know if you've reconsidered, and he like laid out once again like how he wanted to do it. And I want to know if this guy is for real or if he's like getting off on the Sending shop. the email? Yeah. yeah. The well, he email. offered me more money this time. So, uh, I mean, I mean like <laughs> but I'm not going to do it, but though, though Trex was like, well, I'll just – shit in the basement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, spoken like, like a true guy, you know, $20 is $20. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> like. <laughs> so yeah, I was one. So you haven't heard from him. I haven't heard from him. So yeah. But so I, maybe but I, I am special. Nice. I'm not nice to people like you are. Like I'm, I go into full Dom mode. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one was, I think you told me once that a guy asked you to fart in a jar. Yeah. Oh, and send yeah. it to him. And yep. send it to you. But oh, you yeah. I had you a guy that? recently. I have a new weirdo guy. I'm totally king shaming people. Fuck you. Grow up there. Um, I had this one weirdo guy. I feel triggered. <laughs> that, <laughs> um, he wanted me to do like a pee custom. And right. I was like, considering it, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like squirt, pee, same shit. Like whatever. Yeah, I'll do a pee custom for you. But it's going to be an astronomical amount of money. Okay. He's like, but I want you to pee for like 45 seconds. And I was like, fuck, 45 
45 seconds. Like, I have the bladder of a nine-year-old woman. So I was like, I don't know if I have 45 seconds of pee in me. So I got to test this out. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom and I was at like 24 seconds, like at my best time. And I was like, yeah, man, that's not going to work out. Like, I'm going to have to like break it up or, you know, I'm not going to lie to the guys and take his money. So I'm like, I'm going to mm-hmm. have to break it up. And he's like, okay, well, you know, do your best. And I was like, all right, well, it's not going to be that great. But And then he wanted me to proceed to like pee in a, like a glass bowl, like squat over a glass bowl and like pee. And I was like, now I got to buy a glass bowl because there's no way I'm using my own glass bowl and then washing it and then ever looking at it the same way. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, so then I just ended up telling him to go fuck. <laughs> yeah, when they start adding in, they get you to agree initially, and they start adding in these extra little things, and yeah. you're like, no. Yeah, like I have like a like a limit where I'm like, okay, yeah, if there's more than three things that are annoying. I'm not doing it. Yeah, three strikes. Yeah. What's the most common custom that you get asked to do? Um, I do a lot of femdom, mm. and I do a lot of jerk off instruction. Mm. I've had like a lot of femdom stuff happen since I stopped shooting. Um, I do it a lot on, like on cam, I will do it and guys love it. And so I've like developed this like little femdom fan base, which is cool. Um, because I'll tell anyone they're a piece of shit. I have no problem. You <laughs> so, don't even need someone to pay you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, so, and I'm also like really mean. So I warn people, I'm like, I'll do a femdom thing for you. But like on like the scale of femdom, I am the asshole. So prepare yourself, you know. And yeah, I do a lot of that, a lot of jerk off instruction, a lot of like, um, like teacher or, um, professional, your boss type, which is kind of like light femdom in a way. So Mm -hmm. just like an authority figure. Yeah. And I also like watching guys jerk off and people know that. So I think they like, like the idea of me. Really? Like, like, yeah, jerk it. I think it's cool. I don't know. Like, do you watch? Do you watch Vic jerk off or does he get to do that on his own time? I ask him sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, let me watch you jerk it for a second. And he's yeah. like, that's weird. I just want to fuck you. I'm like, no, jerk your penis first. <laughs> Those are rough days. Those are rough days. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when my husband masturbates. I think it's got to be in the shower because he takes fairly long showers he's doing it he's jerking it yeah but he like he won't tell me i'm so curious i'm like all for it like i'm all like i don't care yeah i don't yeah yeah i make a living off of you (laughs) i make a living off of people jerking off like i clearly have no problem with it most of us like your husband who i know very well did not live in that lifestyle (laughs) So we were basically yeah. told growing up, shut the fuck up and don't tell anybody when you're drinking. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm like, like, let me see. He's like, why? I'm like, because I think it's hot. I don't know. How, how do you? I like watching guys. I think it's, I like to think, I, I like to guess. I'm like, that penis looks like a head stroker. That dick looks like a full stroke. He looks like a ball puller. And I like to like guess what's going to happen. And like what he does to come. We should do like a game show trivia. <laughs> Uh, where like guys like you have like a you know pre-recorded videos and then you have like a picture of the guy's penis and then like you have to guess which one of those he is i'm totally down for this that would be fun how vic how did you and my husband growing up such normal good catholic boys end up with such strange women with monsters (laughs) (laughs) Poor life choices. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I've, I've always been kind of black sheep of my family, so this did not surprise anyone in my lunatic. But you met my lunatic family, so I don't know. I if did it you either. I did. I'll never forget the fight in the bus on the way back. About was it about baseball? Yeah, it was yeah. about baseball between my, yeah, between my daughter and Adam over the Red Sox yeah. Yankees. Yeah, right. I don't know if I told that story, but long story short, for those listening. Um, my stepdaughter, baby Danny, um, is a Yankee fan and one of my bridesmen, <laughs> Adam is a Red Sox fan and they are friends, but not when it comes to sports. No. And we, at the bachelor party, I had like bought a taco pinata from like Walmart and I filled it with like $500 in sex toys. To, and it was supposed to be like an icebreaker, 
but it never got used. It was never needed because everyone got along right away. Yeah. Um, and so it like sat on this party bus like all night. And then we ended up leaving the strip club. Everyone's hammered. And the Yankees had lost. The like, Yankees lost going. Yeah, we, it was game seven. They lost yeah. going to the playoffs that night. Yeah. We're and, beat by Houston, the cheating and, pricks that they are. And my friend Adam, <laughs> who's like a total asshole, like, like he has told me the story since. He planned it. Waited until like everyone was drunk and like it like lulled out for like a half a second. It was silent. That and sounds he like him. Screams in a bus of like fifty people. Hey, baby, Danny, how about them Yankees? She loses her shit, <laughs> grabs the pinata, and runs to the back of the bus and starts beating him with it. Yeah, like he and stole then, something. <laughs> I start screaming. I'm like, "There's dildos in there!" Because I'm like <laughs> watching these dildos like fly across this bus. And that was our bachelor party. It was super fun. <laughs> that was quite a night. That was quite a night. I was always sad that that hot stripper girl never was, uh, followed through. Yeah. I, I, I generally tell that story to friends of mine, to guys laughing, because there isn't a guy on the planet that doesn't know your pain of a stripper not following through after you gave him a number. <laughs> and I'm like, Holly was looking at, like, I remember you were at a table. We were at the bed the, uh, the breakfast. You had a table, and there were a bunch of guys. And you're like, she didn't call me back. And all the guys are like, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. You- but I was going to save her, Vic. And all I the guys were like, yeah, that's what <laughs> So for those who don't know the story, we went to a strip club and there was this one really cute young blonde stripper. And one. One. It wasn't the girl who yelled at you for getting married. Right, right, right. Uh, What did she say again? Uh, You don't need no man. Yeah. Yeah, because she had two trucks. (laughs) You don't need no man. You don't need no man. I got a double wide and I got two trucks. And I was like, oh, I think she like, also had day, like, we still say that. Oh yeah. I think, I feel like she also mentioned a couple of children. Might've had. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was. A, yeah. A yeah, she, of, yeah. She definitely would like kick your ass. In the butt she had a lot going for her. Um, side, side well, note. She wanted to be her friends. Side note. <laughs> Um, my wife just watched Porky's for the first time. And when yeah. she saw Porky, she was like, oh my God, that's the strip Literally. club we went to in Missouri. I don't know if I've seen that movie. Yeah, it's watch really, the movie. When, exactly. when they show you the scene, you'll go, that's the strip club we yeah. were at. In yeah. It was a pretty sketchy strip club. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was like this one cute blonde stripper and I was shooting for Playboy at the time. And I was like, I think I could shoot you for Playboy. Like, here's my number. Call me. Like, I'll fly you out to LA. I'll shoot you for Playboy. And, and she seemed really excited. And, um, and then she actually did, we did talk. And then, um, when it came down to like, planning to fly her out or something like that when when it came down to like actually following through that's when she goes to me <laughs> some people just don't want to be you saved. Got one step further yeah. than most guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was sad but those girls were so happy i mean you work in this like kind of shitty strip club mm-hmm. and wasn't it like a tuesday night too or something oh, like that it was sunday because we got sunday. married <laughs> No, it was Saturday. It was Saturday. It was, it was Saturday. Oh, it was, it was a Saturday. Saturday. It was yeah. Saturday, but it, it wasn't was just that a busy. Shitty strip club. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. And then just all these like hot porn stars come in, and yeah. you guys had all this money because I think like you really felt this kind of affiliation with these girls, you and know, like you wanted to support them. Buy or are buy. So we're yeah. Like- I like strippers more than most of the dudes in here. <laughs> yeah, and we're dancers too. So like you guys were just like yeah, rain and cash. Oh, yeah. We had 37 people from New York and LA used to New York and LA strip club prices. And we're in Missouri. It was like Nirvana. You know, yeah. drinks were about a tenth of the price of any place you've been to. <laughs> so they had this wad of cash and they just kept heaving yeah. it at the girls. And it was like, oh, they had to make man. two weeks worth of pay in one day there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were very happy. So you guys have started a podcast now, obviously. Yeah. Um, what gave you the idea to do it and how's it been for you so far? Um, well, I had the, a podcast with Cam Soda a couple years back. Yes, because then, I was like, I wasn't, I was like your, first guest, I think. yeah, I was like your second or third guest, I mm-hmm. think. And then when I moved to New York, I was like, it, it was just like too much to try to do. And like, um, so I stopped doing it and then everyone kept asking me to do it. And I was like, I'm not doing it. It's 
like a pain in the ass. I'm not doing it. And I, I, people like kept demanding, like, oh, you should do more episodes. You should. I was like, okay. And I just told Vic, I was like, I'll only do it if Vic's my co-host because he's the only person I can stand. And Vic's like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, you're doing it. <laughs> like, that's so, how it started. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, why do I feel like that's all the way a lot of conversations have gone for you guys? Oh, uh, 100%. Vic, you're going to do it. I'm not doing it. No, you're going to do it. And then Vic's like, here I am. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Pretty, yeah. Vic like very <laughs> rarely ever puts his foot down, but when he does, I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then it just kind of like I wanted also wanted to like produce free content for people because I feel like my job is just constantly like pay for my porn, pay for my porn, pay for my mm-hmm. titties, pay for my porn. So I wanted to have something that like like this, like I could come hang out with my friends, promote whatever we wanted to promote, and like just give it out for free. Like here, mm-hmm. here's some free shit like enjoy you know um and so i put it out on youtube and we put it out on like everywhere else itunes spotify you know name a place but it's been good and like it is a way to like like this situation catch up with my friends you know have cool conversations and see people can see this is what it's like (laughs) prior prior to lockdown it was a great way when we knew people were coming to town we'd be like oh great let's go and uh let's go do the podcast now we're doing the same thing you are zoom skype whatever the hell we can figure out yeah, yeah. Do you say snipe? Skype. <laughs> oh, I was like, what's snipe? <laughs> yeah, it's um, I mean, it's like, yeah. When do you get an opportunity, really, these days, to sit down with somebody for like an hour without your phones, without mm-hmm. distractions, and just talk to them? Yeah. yeah. And like for us, like we like to keep it like I. I usually do fan questions. Like I didn't do it today because I knew we were doing like a swap. So you were gonna have questions. We're gonna have our own. So I didn't even go there. But usually it's like we do fan questions so that the fans can get involved. But other than that, like we just chat. We don't, mm-hmm. I wanted to like people to see what people are like in real life, you know? Right. Yeah. And just kind of have like a hangout time situation. Yeah. So it's been good. It's been fun and people like it. Yeah. So far, you know, I'm not sure if my husband likes doing it yet, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you do what you got to do. <laughs> what about you? What if- Why'd you start- Why'd you start yours? Uh, So I started mine in the midst of like kind of an existential crisis because I had a horrible, horrible summer. So I had this really bad uh, time where Playboy fired me. And this was when Cooper Hefner took over. So this has nothing Mm -hmm. to do with the people who run Playboy now. I'm working for Playboy again now. They're great. So just want to make sure I clarify that. (laughs) No shade, Cass. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no no shade. Please don't fire me again. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so Cooper Hefner came in and he he didn't like me. So they got rid of me. And I found out in a really horrible way. I was accidentally sent an email that was meant not – Meant for me to see. Actually, I, re- I, I actually remember that. that. I, yeah, I remember talking. I discussed to you my that. termination, and that like really broke my heart. Um, and then some other clients that I was shooting for suddenly just dropped me from like six to eight scenes a month to one. Mm. And then I fell out with the people that were running my website. They fucked me over for a bunch of money. I started my own new website, which cost me a ton of money and I had relapsed. So my drinking was a real problem. So all of these things combined, I became more depressed than I have been in a really long time. And I was in this place where I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Because I felt like there was no place for me in the adult industry anymore. Like I had spent, this has been my life. And it's everything that I've ever done and I've never looked to do anything else. And so when faced with this possible situation that like I wasn't getting hired and then the clients that I relied on for so long weren't giving me work, like what was I going to do? Because, you know, back, um, back towards the beginning of my career, I, you know, I kind of had more of a stranglehold on like the glamour market. There weren't that many, uh, people producing like high end content. And now there is, there's a lot of like really talented directors and producers in the industry. And so, um, I didn't feel like I was like that unique anymore. And, um, yeah. I so you are, but I get what you're saying. Thank you. Like, I disagree with that, but yeah. I understand because you know, when you yeah. have like a bunch of shitty shit happen, you're like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, what, like, what can I do? Like, what, what skills do I have? What, um, what makes me unique and different than other people in this industry? And I thought, okay, well, I've been in the industry for a long time. I know a lot of people. Um, I'm friendly with a lot of people. I think like a good amount of people respect me and maybe I could do something and I like to talk. (laughs) So maybe I could do something where like I talk to people in the industry and I could do a podcast and you know, this podcast thing was things that a lot of people were doing. And I was like, okay, let me give this a shot, you know? And, and I thought about all of the times that, you know, mainstream media has covered the adult industry and just skewed it in a way that makes horribly. I mean, you guys know, you know, they always come in with an angle and an agenda and they talk to the most broken people and they try to show like the worst side of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I really want to show the world what working inside the industry is like from an industry insider. And I want people to like, see how amazing these people are Mm -hmm. and know them as I know them and know them as real people. And so I thought, okay, well I'll do like 10, I'll do like a season. I'll do 10 episodes. Probably it won't go anywhere. Nobody will care, but I'm the kind of person who like just tries to try a lot of things and just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. And it, became like almost immediately pretty successful and I got incredible feedback and people really loved it. And I guess there was a a need out there for people to see, like have really an insider's look at the adult industry and get to know like their favorite stars as people. Mm -hmm. And people, I started getting, you know, these letters were like, people told me that I've changed their mind about the adult industry that it, they see yeah, I people love differently. That stuff. I get excited when I get to read that. It's yeah. like the best. It's incredible. It's, it's so incredible. So, you know, knowing that, um, I've been able to create this platform where I can like give people a voice and, and, and show the world, you know, who we really are. It's been, mm-hmm. it's been really special. It's been a life changing thing for me, actually. It's the best thing I ever did. I'm so happy that, but I had no, to go through that. Tell the way you're talking about it. You're actually, you're kind of lighting up over it. It's really cool. Even though, it, and like, even like knowing you for as long as I've known you, like you're definitely the happiest I've ever seen you ever. Thank you. Yeah. It's, thank you. Yeah. No, that's, I am. It's weird actually. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be married three years and one of the, the, the and not even one of the first podcasts, but one of the podcasts you did was right after we got married. So you've been at this a good mm-hmm. chunk of time now. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be three years in like a couple of months. Yeah. And um, I will hit, I should hit 2 million downloads in July. That's Yay! awesome. Which is How many cool. episodes are you at now? Um, I'm at like 200, no, wait, no, 155, 56. That's great. Something like that. So, and that's, and that number is just my, um, the audio downloads. The YouTube is a right. whole different story. Yeah. yeah. So and I, it's, it's bizarre for us. And I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming because, you know, everybody just loves to look at me. Uh, our YouTube is much, <laughs> our YouTube is, is much higher than our download. Our downloads are really good, but our YouTube is much higher. But totally. You know, yeah. It's, well, it's, it, when you're putting on the, the guests that you're putting on, even the guests that we're putting, people want to see it. So they yeah. do watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm really happy that I started shooting video from the very beginning because a lot of podcasts don't shoot video. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the YouTube market has been so incredibly important. But also, too, YouTube has that wonderful algorithm thing where yeah. they will actually push videos to other people who wouldn't normally come and look your stuff up. Whereas that doesn't happen on the audio podcast platforms. No, no. Yeah. You have to find, you have to search, you know, you have to know what you're looking for there. Yeah. I mean, do you guys ever get comments from people who are like, how the fuck did I end up on this feed? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I get get that a lot. (laughs) Every once in in a while, I'll see them like, why did this pop up on my page? And it's like, well, 
YouTube is owned by Google, so you might yeah. want to look at your Google search history. Yeah, so Enjoy. Just say it. Yeah, well, but ours is really weird, too, because we will have, you know, we have Riley Reed, we had Mia Malkova, but then we also have the guy who's the lead in Hades Town and Beetlejuice. So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, what you're so doing, we get you know? people that are like, I came here for Broadway, but then ended up in porn. Like, how did this, <laughs> how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you guys, how has that been, like, having such an eclectic mix of guests? Because I find that... That, you know, I, I try to make sure that everybody I interview has something to do with sex, mm -hmm. whether or not they're an author or a therapist or an educator, like you don't have to work in the adult industry, but there's something that they do that has some touch tone yeah. uh, to sex. Um, but I find often that the episodes that I do that aren't specifically about the adult industry, like they don't perform as well, which sucks because I find that a lot of times those are like really great interviews. So how does it, how is it for you guys? Like, do you get some people who are like, why, you know, like I came here for porn and I got this, or I came here for Broadway and I got porn, like what the fuck? A little bit, but I think Not like much, yeah. we kind of, cause we started it out being eclectic and like having everyone. Cause we just, we started it with all of our friends. Yeah. I, so I, it was like, oh, we have so many friends that aren't in porn as well mm -hmm. as people that are. And we kind of like mix and match. So I don't think anyone really like was shocked, but there are people that are fans of one person that'll be like, Oh, you also have like all these other different, yeah, you know? Yeah. And like our first two episodes were, were Jim Norton, the comic and my daughter talking about her podcast, Danny's dugout. Little shout out to my daughter there. Um, but yeah, those were like the first two guests. And then it's basically been like one adult film star and then somebody else that we know in the city. So it's a lot of the conversations. I mean, we really, most of the people that we've had on are people that we've know, dealt with, some people who are on dinner with Danny, you know, that kind of a thing. So the conversations, it's almost like the camera kind of disappears yeah. and people are just watching a bunch of friends bullshit. So mm -hmm. I think once people got used to that, now that we're like 40 something episodes in, they're, they're kind of like, oh, okay, cool. They, but yeah, you know, in the beginning, some people were like, where are all the porn stars? And then, people, <laughs> then we had a few people like, holy shit, there are porn stars here. Where did they come from? <laughs> what have been some of your favorite episodes like that people should go check out if maybe they're new to your podcast? I love Patrick Page yeah, Patrick, because wait. he's my, like, don't tell the others. But he's my Broadway guy. <laughs> your what? I love his Show voice. Me. And like, He's just, I just think. Who is he? So he's, he's my favorite because I'm biased. <laughs> he's a, he, he, you know, it's so funny. We had three major Broadway guys who were starring in three of the biggest Broadway shows, Hades Town, Beetlejuice, and Book of Mormon. And, and you met Dave from Book of Mormon. He actually oh, yeah. sang at our wedding, right? You, you know mm -hmm. Dave. So obviously Dave was very friendly. And then we had the guy who played Beetlejuice and the guy who plays Hades in Hades Town. Three completely different episodes. Completely different episodes. The guy who plays Beetlejuice is a goofball, very knowledgeable, big stand-up comedy guy. Dave was very friendly. And Patrick is like this Shakespearean genius with this big, deep, booming voice. So, you know, it's like these crazy episodes. We've had, you know, they're kind of almost like split up. It's like, if you like the Broadway episodes, those are great. If you like the porn episodes, like obviously Cherie yeah. being on because she's so friendly with I us. actually really like Alexis Fox because Alexis she's Fox. like literal sunshine. And yeah. just some of the stuff she talks about is just, yeah, I love her. We had, so we had, if you want to like just cheer yourself up, we had Joanna and Small Hands on literally before we went to go see Beetlejuice. They were on the podcast, so that was fun. And honestly, I love the episode with Riley because she was mm -hmm. really she was she was talking about how difficult it is to constantly be Riley, and it was yeah. a really kind of interesting episode. But then you know, even the comics, Sherrod was great, Jim was great. So it's like, what do you want? You want comics? We got those. You want Broadway? We got those. Yeah. You want yeah. porn stars? We got plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny thing about Riley, I shot her a couple of months ago with Alina Lopez for Twisties, and we shot in this like uh, dance studio, and there were some construction guys working outside, and Riley showed up to come to set, and I had to go outside to like meet her and let her in, and she was wearing this big like bear onesie or something <laughs> like that, and she comes in. And then I went outside because like they were working on the street. And so the audio was a problem. And I was like, Hey, yeah. when are you guys going to be done with the audio? Cause I have to shoot some uh, mainstream stuff. <laughs> and, and the guys were like, was that Riley Reed in there? I'm like, fuck. 
<laughs> like, holy shit. And I was like, and, I, and without missing a beat, I go, no, 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 no. I know she looks so much like Riley. She gets that all the time, but it's definitely not her. <laughs> they were like, and also, can you stop doing construction so we can go shoot some? Yeah, it's Riley Reed. If you'll stop fucking like hammer yeah. jackhammering the street. Yeah, it's, it's, it'll be anybody you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I need to take another commercial break and we'll be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Okay. All right. We are back and I believe you guys have some questions for me. I do. Okay. So one of my questions, because I'm selfish that I want to ask is how you are doing shooting nude because <laughs> I spent a long time trying to see your boobs <laughs> and now they're just on the internet and I'm mad. <laughs> I, av I avoid seeing your boobs at all costs. <laughs> I avoid your boobs. Same. I avoid your boobs. I avoid Cherie's boobs. I avoid pretty much anybody that you saw at the wedding's boobs. It's really difficult yeah. on Twitter to avoid boobs, yeah. by the way. So how is it that, like, what made you want to do it? Like, where did it come okay. from? Okay. <laughs> So it's funny that you say that because that just takes me back to that one memory when we all went to the Korean spa, you, me, and yes. Shri. And Shri, Shri it, had been the entire time trying to see your boobs. <laughs> well, we, so you have to be like naked at the spa, right? So we're all yeah. sitting in the jacuzzi. So I'm naked and I can see you guys like clearly trying not to stare at my boobs, like try, like desperately trying to keep eye contact with me. Trying to be like an 18 year old boy. <laughs> this is literally what was happening. And it's super obvious that you're trying to see because, like, you've I've seen you guys naked so many times, yeah. but you'd never seen me naked. So, um, yeah, that was that was a fun. Yeah, and, and you, I think you finally were like, "You guys can look at." We're like, "Oh, okay," because we're trying <laughs> to <laughs> just look. There you go. <laughs> so okay, so uh, I know a lot of people don't fucking believe this story, but I don't care. It's the truth. Believe whatever you want to believe. Doesn't matter to me. So it was a mistake. It started off as a mistake. So I shot some, uh, content. I had, I hired a photographer to mm -hmm. shoot me named Mark Don, like when I turned 29, because I was almost going to be 30, which is so old that I wanted one sexy shoot of myself before I got old. <sighs> and <laughs> I know I look, think of that now and I'm just like, Oh my God. So I had this guy Mark Don shoot me and it was all only supposed to be clothed. And I thought maybe throw in a couple implied for fun. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as I started shooting, I started to feel more comfortable. And then he was like, do you want to just do some like topless stuff? Like then you can just have it and then you can do whatever you want with it later. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Why not? Like, you know, maybe I'll look at it when I'm 80 and be like, Oh, I was so hot. Look at my park of titties. <laughs> so I said, sure. And so we shot them and, um, I had them retouched along with the other pictures just because I was sending in a batch to get retouched. And so yeah. I had them all done, but then I pulled the images from the gallery, 
um, before I posted them. Yeah. And so I posted these. This was on my old website. I've changed websites management a couple of times. So when I started my website again, this time on the current server that it's on, um, my assistant at the time was uploading content for me. And I realized that I had forgotten to upload the pictures of me. So I said to her, I'm like, okay, so go ahead and upload these. Just make sure that you delete the nudes from the gallery. Cause they were still all in like yeah. the same folder. And she was like, okay, sure. So and it turns out it was really ultimately my fault because I gave her the wrong direction. So the way that the CMS works on my website is that you upload a gallery and there's like the gallery showing where you see the thumbnails that you can click on. And then there's downloadable zip files, right? And they're two separate links. So she went, she uploaded the set. She went into the gallery and she physically deleted the pictures from the gallery. So she thought, okay, like fine, post them. Yeah. So she put them up on like a Friday. I wake up on Saturday morning and my tits are all over Twitter. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, like God. what happened? How did this happen? And I texted her and I called her and I was like, you fucking put my nudes up. And she's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, yeah, you did. They're all over the internet. She's like, no, I swear to God, I deleted them from the gallery. Just like you told me. And I went in and I looked and what I realized was that we forgot to delete them from, they were in the zip files Oh shit! because they're two separate uploads. So it was a CMS error. It was a Christmas morning for the, for Twitter. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I had to freak out for a second. Then I was like, okay, it's not that big of a deal. They're actually very yeah. nice photos. Yeah. And um, it was oh, not my job. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like your family is very conservative. So. Yeah, it's not like my family won't care. Honestly, the only person I was worried about was my husband. That was the only person. So he was at hockey and I called him and he was about to go on the ice. And I was like, babe, I have something to tell you. And he was like, what? I'm like, I don't know. You're going to be mad. And he was like, what? And I was like, and I told him, and he goes, oh, babe, I don't care. He goes, you have nice tits. Who cares? And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, I got to go. I'm like, okay. That's, and so then, that's when you knew he was a keeper. Yeah. I know, right? And so then I was like, all right, well, I mean, I know better than anybody that once things on the internet, you can't take it back. Like yeah. it's fucking, it's there. So I was like, I'm just going to own it and I'm going to promote it and I'm going to make money off of it. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah. And my website did better that weekend than it's ever done. <laughs> and you know i was just like okay well i have some more from other sets we'll just release those like fuck it they're out there like my tits yeah. are out there why not and so i did and then um and then we were in and then i think i posted a couple of topless pictures like here and there on my snapchat but um i was still like felt kind of weird about it mm -hmm. and then we were in italy and we were in florence and uh, we our flight got canceled because the airline went on strike. And like really. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and the only way to get back, because we both had to get back because we had to work, was basically pay like another $2,500 to take a train to Milan, like fly out of Milan um, and to San Francisco. And, and it was like, and it was 2,500 oh. bucks. Like they wouldn't refund me my money. So, um, I was like, I could probably pay for this if I like actually promoted like some topless pictures on that. I had topless pictures on my Snapchat cause I'd never really promoted it before. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I made a lot of money <laughs> and I was like, Hmm. So I talked to Trex and I was like, how do you feel about like me actually shooting like just some nude stuff here and there because like people are paying a lot of money for it. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure. That's cool. I don't care. And then, um, I did some like selfies in my shitty bathroom and he <laughs> saw some of the pictures and he goes, babe, these are, he's like, this is terrible. Your fans deserve more than shitty photos in your shitty bathroom. Why don't we like go to a hotel, get your hair and makeup done and I'll shoot like pretty pictures of you in lingerie. And I was like, okay. All right. Like you're in on it. So that's what we did. And it's been really, it's actually been really nice. Um, it's been a wonderful additional source of income. I won't yeah. lie. That's been really helpful, especially during quarantine. Um, 
It's made me feel more confident about my body. Mm-hmm. Uh, my fans have been incredible. Like just so, I mean, you know, obviously you get the, the guy here and there who's like, show me your pussy. And I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. do that. And they're like, fuck you. Yeah. Um, but, but for the most way you could do everything, everything. Like, yeah. More penis. Exactly. <laughs> you could cure <laughs> cancer. Park, and then Park a car in your asshole. It's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we all know this. So, um, but for the most part, they've been like so wonderful and so respectful. And it's actually been really great for like our sex life because, I never dress up in lingerie and like act sexy for my man. Like, I just don't do that. It's not really my thing. I feel like silly when I do it, Mm -hmm. but doing it with like a financial and business motivation behind it makes it something different. And so now he finds that, you know, even though I'm like doing these strip teases and these pictures technically for like fans, I'm also really doing it for him because he's the only person that I let take pictures of me. Mm-hmm. So like he gets to see this whole other side of me that he never got to see before. And, you know, it's been, it's that. been, yeah. So it's been really good for our relationship and it's been good for our sex life. And, you know, after a few years of trying, sort of trying, I'm, I got pregnant in January. So, so who cool. knows? So Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah and i've continued to shoot while i'm pregnant did you do, pre- did you do prego prego nudes i have been yeah and people have been really actually we're going away this weekend after this podcast which is why i had to push it back push it that forward back 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 back, back in time oh, yeah. we're early <laughs> uh because we're going out to like a cabin like this remote cabin for the weekend and we're gonna like shoot some stuff there. And he was like, okay, let's get a tent and we can get like a little camper, like flannel for you. And we can like a hat and we'll like do some sexy pictures in there. And I was like, you're totally into this. This is so fun. Isn't it nice having a supportive partner? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. It, and it's so funny too, you know, because I've spent so many years photographing girls naked in front of, of me and always, you know, trying to tell them that they're beautiful and that they're sexy and that they should feel empowered by it. But I've never personally felt that way. Mm -hmm. Like when the camera was turned on me, but now I feel more that way. So it's kind of, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just interesting. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. How has it been being pregnant? Like, I mean, obviously Jane the pregnant porn is awesome. Is there anything like you were surprised by? Besides yeah. as a whole, but like- yeah. So I've actually been surprised. So I was really nervous about getting pregnant because, you know, you hear all these horror stories about people who have like really bad morning sickness and like mm-hmm. crazy raging hormones and they like cry at everything and like throw things at their partner. None of that happened to me. I never got morning sickness. I've had zero mood swings. Um, I've actually felt really good the whole time. I felt like better than I've ever felt in my life. Wow. Like, yeah, it's really strange. Like I'm in a good mood. Like I generally have more energy that's starting to change now. I have days when I wake up when I'm like really fucking tired. Yeah. Um, and I like go back to sleep at like, I'll get up at seven and then I like go back to sleep at 11 AM because I'm just like, I can't make it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now being at five and a half months pregnant, it's starting now I'm starting to like feel the weight of the pregnancy. Literally, I'm starting to get this thing called the Braxton Hicks uh, contractions, which is basically like these fake contractions that you get, which is your body preparing you for the real thing. And they're like excruciatingly painful cramps. Ooh. Yeah, it Ooh, sucks. Right. But I've only gotten those once. And then like you get like ligament pain because the baby's like resting on your pelvis and same thing. Like, so your hormone releases this, your hormone, your body releases this hormone which kind of starts to loosen up your limbs and your joints Mm -hmm. so that um, you become more flexible to allow like your pelvis to expand, to have the baby. So you're actually a lot more sore than you normally would be. Wild. And then what I was telling you before about the tailbone pain. Yeah. So I've been having like this excruciating. It's crazy what like a woman's body does. Like I obviously, I've never been pregnant. I don't have kids. So I have no idea, but it's like, you hear these stories. I'm like, this is like, why? It's like your so moving. I'm like, I don't even. Yeah, it's so weird. So yeah, as I was telling you, I've been having like excruciating tailbone pain, 
And I thought I heard it on the bike and we looked it up and it's a very common thing because my pelvic floor is expanding and my tailbone's literally moving out of the way for birth. So I have to sit on like a, like a donut shaped pillow for like people with hemorrhoids. <laughs> <'cause it hurts laughs> so bad. Man, uh, are you eating weird stuff? No, I know that I feel I, I am disappointed. It's funny. I talked to Asa Akira about this and I feel like that whole craving thing is like a little bit of a myth, mm. um, because she didn't have any crazy cravings either. Um, I do like citrus. Like I've been eating more oranges and drinking more orange juice, but I'm not having any weird like pickles and ice cream yeah. cravings. I just am eating more. And I think part of it is only because like, I feel like I can eat more. Yeah. Because it's like the first time in my life that I don't have to like watch what I eat and I don't need to worry about getting bigger. So I think a lot of it is a mental, like I can eat whatever I want. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to have know? an extra ice cream if I want to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean the bell, I actually have to say this morning I, uh, I was shaving my vagina for the first time in a while. I was going to say, was, I was like, okay. And, uh, I couldn't really get down there. Like I couldn't see what was happening. So I, I think I did a bad job. I don't know. <laughs> He's doing it blind. We're going to get mirrors. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was like, Oh fuck. Like I can't like it's my belly's belly. in the way now. <laughs> so it's a trip. It's, it's super weird because I pretty much like, I mean, I know we've talked about this before. I kind of didn't really think I was going to have kids. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure if I wanted them. Like it's such a big life change. Yeah. So, um, it's been strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Wait. Like when I thought, when you told me you were pregnant, I was like, what? Like, yeah. I'm happy. I love it. It's a oh, life yeah. sentence. Mine are, you met mine. So yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. I know. I know. It stays strange. It never stops being strange. <laughs> Yeah. And my brother and my sister-in-law live in the back guest house and they just had a baby like two weeks ago. So it's been really, yeah, it's really cool. And it's also great too, because, you know, I'm kind of like getting all of the info that I need from her. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, she's been like filling me in on stuff and also just like seeing what they go through and, you know, learning about like crazy shit that babies do. Yeah. It's so bizarre. You ready for our questions? Mine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I do, I do these with, with all the guests. It's basically just a, a set list of 10 questions. And the first one is what's the most annoying question people ask you? <laughs> uh, do you get turned on while you're shooting scenes? Oh. I, yeah. It's so annoying to me. And I guess I should understand why people ask that because, you know, people don't understand what the porn industry is like, which is why I think people love podcasts like yours and mine. Mm -hmm. But if people like spent a day on set, they would understand generally like for, especially for the production crew, how unsexy it is because (laughs) like when I'm shooting two people having sex, I am not, sex is not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the camera angles and thinking about the lighting. I'm thinking about, are we going to hit like our marker? You know, like we need to get 25 minutes. I'm thinking, are we going overtime on location? I'm calculating like how much I have to pay in overtime fees. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking like, is the sound going to battery going to run out? Like there's so many things that I'm thinking about. Um, wow, that looks hot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And if it is a really hot scene, then I, I get excited, but not in a sexual way. I get excited like that I'm creating good product, that my client's going to be happy or my audience is going to be happy. So it's not a, it's not a turned on excitement. Um, they're actually, so there was, now I'm going to completely contradict what I just said. Uh, there was one time that I got like a tiny bit turned on when I was shooting a scene and I actually had the guy on my podcast and I told him about it. So it was when I was shooting Tommy pistol and so I know. So for me, I love guys talking dirty and that's really hard to find in porn because most of the time they just want to hear from the girls. They don't want to hear from the guys. The guys are trained not to say anything. Exactly. Because you know, most of the consumers are men, but for me, like I'm really auditory. So if a guy 
really knows how to dirty talk, like I'm into that, especially if it's someone who's playing like an authoritative position. Mm -hmm. And Tommy was playing a professor who was like seducing his student in a scene that I was shooting for Naughty America. And just like, it was, I was like, Oh, and he'll never shut up. Like, I know. And I love it. (laughs) And he'll keep it up. Like him, like he's probably the best male like role, like role player in my mind, mm-hmm. and like Shane yeah. Deville is like the best. Like they will keep who whatever they're playing up the whole scene. <laughs> sure, he is amazing. Yeah, yeah, like for me, like if I'm doing something, like as soon as the dicks in me, I am in a whole another planet. But like the fact that they can stick with it, I'm like, yeah, how? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, so yeah, so that was the only time that I was like a little bit um turned on. But besides that, uh. No, and I hate that question. I'm sure Tommy loved hearing that. Yeah, I'm sure. Tommy <laughs> yeah, he was that. actually really taken aback. I think he was a little embarrassed. Uh, what is your favorite way to eat a potato? <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so uh, being that I come from British a British heritage, yes. I can make a mean roast potato. So the secret to roast potatoes is to use like duck fat and to roast it slowly for a long period of time with some basic herbs like thyme and salt and pepper. Um, but that's really all you need. And, uh, Americans often will like undercook the roast potatoes. Like the outside has to be crispy and the inside has to be like hot and smushy and, um, yeah. Uh, proper English roast potatoes. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm hungry. (laughs) (laughs) What would the title of your autobiography be? Oh, I already have it. And I've, uh, I, I bought the URL. Nice. Uh, so you can the, say it. <laughs> yeah. You all your shit. The pornographer's daughter. Ooh, oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Doesn't that sound like kind of sexy and like, yeah. Mm, yeah. I remember somebody put out a play like 10 years ago with that name and I was so mad because I was like, Rrr, but oh, it's so fine. like storing it yeah. for like ever? Yeah, but I own the URL, so fuck you. Yeah, but it's your, title. that's a great title and, and reasonably accurate. So Yeah, exactly. How are your parents, by the way? Not to get you off, but... um, they are really good. My dad has actually been doing so much better lately. I think we finally got him on like the right mix of medication because the problem is, is that he has low blood pressure. So if he takes too much of the, the, the medicine that we've given for his Parkinson's, his blood pressure drops and then he falls and he's done that a few times and the guy's, you know, like six, two. So when he falls, like he falls yeah. and you know, the last thing he needs is like a fucking broken hip because then like he's fucked. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he's been doing much better. He's been a lot more cognizant. There was a time period that I don't know what they were giving him, but he was like a zombie, you know, and it was like mm-hmm. he wasn't even there. It was like, really yeah. sad. Um, and now he seems to be much more like sprightly and kind of on his feet, you know, and he's uh, trying to, you know, hide his drinking from my mom again, which is, I guess, is, <laughs> you know, means he's back to normal. Yeah, and- <laughs> yeah everything's right in the world. <laughs> yeah. He's like, when we come over, you know, he's always like, when my mom leaves, he's like, to my husband, he's like, get me another beer. Like pretend it's the same one that I was drinking before. Sounds, sounds like my dad who constantly blames my wife for every glass of wine he yeah. drinks. Like, oh, why did you give me more wine? Um, yeah. And my mom is uh, exactly the same. Um, she's doing great, but they're both like super excited about the grandkids, you know? Yeah, I can't, I'm sure. I bet. I'm sure. So. They're actually getting two in a row. And I'm sure they're like, mm-hmm. I know we made them wait. So, you know, they have three children that are all married, you know, in their thirties and early forties. And like, they didn't have a single grandkid. And that's all my mom ever fucking wanted. And so, <laughs> yeah, now my brother and I are giving her two grandchildren, like within the span of six months. It's so weird. That's, I love it's it. It's kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the biggest turning point in your life so far? I would, uh, okay. Um, definitely getting sober, like for sure. And it's hard to say which one, I guess the, cause you know, I have two distinct sobrieties. I have the first one when I got sober, which was like 12, 13 years ago. And then I was sober for second year, seven years 
And then I relapsed and then I had about four and a half years until I got sober again. And I'll have two years next month. In like two weeks. In two weeks, I'll have two years. Oh, wow. I just realized that. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, getting sober, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, but definitely the most rewarding. It was something that really forced me to look at myself in my life and, um, really make some like hard decisions about what was important to me. And it really forced me to get to know myself. Yeah. So yeah, definitely that. What are you most proud of? Um, getting sober. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just like the greatest achievement I've I've ever accomplished. What takes up too much of your time? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think like what you were talking about earlier, Danny, just the back end shit just like scheduling social media posts, uploading, downloading files, um, paperwork, things that people don't realize until they work for themselves. And you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. Just time it takes. It's not just a couple of minutes. It's hours in cases. Yeah. Yeah. Like we've actually been, so during this quarantine and to be fair, Ev has been doing all of this. I haven't been doing any of it, but it's taking up an enormous amount of her time, which I'm obviously paying for. Um, but twisties is having us like, uh, create, do the production. So people are self-producing content at home mm-hmm. for twisties. Cause obviously we can't shoot. So we have to send the like required specs to the girls. We have to send them paperwork. This is all remotely. Of course, we have to tell them what kind of scenario twisties wants shot. They have to send us the files. We okay. have to like tell them that they did it wrong and make them reshoot it. Then they have to send it back to us again. We have to explain to them how to use Dropbox and then we have to like upload the files to the Twisty server. It's oh, we have to get the yeah, girls to respond to us. Yeah, yeah. Because like a lot of them, I think, are just making enough money on their own. Like they say that they'll do it, and then they like just don't fucking do it. Yeah, because yeah, why bother? I mean, yeah, that's like kind of the way the industry is going. Everyone's yeah, themselves now. So right, like, but then just like turn the booking down. Yeah, They're like right. you, you know what? Know. Yeah, I do know. agree. I don't need to do it. Maybe so, paranoid. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Just say no. But maybe I think like that they, I, I think they say yes because it's twisties and they don't want to um, say no yeah. um, because they don't want to like get blacklisted, which they wouldn't be, but you know how people think, yeah. but you know, I mean, there's a couple, it's like, it's funny. We were like, can Sheree just shoot all of them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, She's yeah. like, she does it like she. You ask her to do something, and she fucking does it. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's got an amazing work ethic. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. She's so like professional on top of it, but you know, obviously, and sadly, it can't all be just Sheree. Otherwise, yeah. that, that that would make my life so much easier. She's like, she's like literally the only performer I will shoot with. Like I don't like we don't have like we do like jerk off instructor and our fetish stuff. Like mm-hmm. we get creative, but like yeah, it's just like it's like so nice to work with someone that's like okay, let's do this. Let's do this. You know, all yeah, professional. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. No, she's on it. What is your favorite smell? Lavender. What gets you fired up? Um, what gets me fired? So I get really like, Agro, I think when I'm talking about the adult industry and about the idea that all women who work in porn are degraded by it. Ah! Yeah. I get really angry about that because for me, when you say that, when you suggest that, you know, for women to do porn, it's degrading, you're automatically placing women in that role of being a victim, which is sexist in itself because you're suggesting that women can't make their own decisions, they can't have agency over their career, they couldn't possibly be sexual people who actually enjoy being exhibitionists and do, um, you know, have sex for a living because they enjoy it. You know, they must have been coerced into it because women are not inherently sexual creatures. And I find all of those assumptions to be so sexist yeah. that it makes me fucking crazy. Yeah. Do, Same. Do, do you know what I think? And I don't know if you ever, I don't know if you ever got a chance to, to read the book, but I, I always found it amazing that you have radical feminists and incredibly religious people both agreeing on that topic. Yeah. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. You know, it's and like literally you have people, you have radical, you know, 
crazy Christians saying the only thing that the only time you should fuck is to create a child. And then you have radical feminists saying, oh, my God, yeah. they're being degraded. And meanwhile, they're making more money than their male counterparts. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. And you never see people like campaigning for men in the porn industry. No. Like when have people ever come out and said like, oh, men are being degraded and this is terrible. Have you seen this guy? He did a small penis humiliation video or he did a femdom video where he got fucked in the butt with a strap on. And we got to like speak up for the rights of these men because they can't stand up for themselves because they don't know any better. Yeah. But like, of course they can because they're men. So like- they can assert themselves. They know what they're doing. Um, it's the women who need to be protected because we're the weaker sex. Yeah. Absolutely. Or like my personal favorite is when people will tell you, what, what do you do? You know, how do you deal with doing something you don't want to do? And I'm like, let me get this straight. You think that women are being raped in porn and you're still watching it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Oh, God, I get fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like, that's or like, because like I love doing BDSM, so when people come after me, like, how do you, what, how can you do those rough scenes? I'm like, because I love it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Now I'm all, now I'm like fired up. I'm like, yeah. Damn. See, right? We get so mad. Fired, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What do you wish you knew more about? God, there's so much I wish I knew more about. Whenever I try to speak intelligently on a subject, I find that I uh, am often lacking so much knowledge in that area. Um, yeah, but in this day and age, that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Why should you know anything? Just oh, yeah, just, It'll work. Just scream about it on Twitter and, and, um, and everything will be better. Yeah. Somebody will agree I, with you. I, I Ask the question, then I have the question. I don't fuck dude. I don't really know. Okay. What do I wish I knew more about? Um, uh, yeah, I just keep thinking like everything. I'm like, I'm so stupid. Like I wish I knew, I don't know. I wish I, I don't retain information as well as I used to. I wish I still remembered like the books that I used to, you know, I was a literature major. I still, I wish I remembered a lot of what I learned in college. Like, I wish I knew more about literature. Um, how about that? Yeah. I wish yeah, I knew more about sick. literature. I just want to know why people in porn use Twitter as a soapbox. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> just had to get that off my chest. Because no uh, one can actually, this is, this is bullying culture at its best. You yeah. can't, no one would ever say it to my face. Because if you say yeah. it to my face, I might punch you in the oh head God. for being an asshole. Yeah. But I can just type away yeah, at 140 so characters, it's like you know. Porn, though, it's to like 80, all yeah. of us just go on Twitter and just I don't know, it's like I, this weird porn thing. I wish it was just you just you, you guys see you guys see yourselves because you're following yourselves, but I follow a lot of things. It's pervasive. Oh, well, it's okay. pervasive, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It, it because I am very much in that porn microcosm, it does feel like it's mm -hmm. its own world and only mm -hmm. people in porn are shitty to each other. But you're right. It's people everywhere. As a publicist, I'm following a bunch of different threads because I do fashion. It's there. It's pervasive. No, well, it's mind. just, you know, Ignore that question. but no, it's, but it, it's a fair question because no one should be using it as this grand soapbox. It's Actually fun. go fucking do something instead well, of not talking. Even that, like, not even that too, it's just funny that everyone chooses like that social media platform, not Facebook, not Instagram. Not, it's just always like Twitter's like this wild west. Yeah. And it's yeah. always kind of been, it's always kind yeah. of been this place yeah. of, you don't really have to think to because your your character numbers are are shut down. So it's you know there's no thought. It's just quick one liners. You know, hundred two. It was one hundred and forty. Now it's two hundred and eighty characters. I mean, it's not a lot to get out yeah. there. So you have to come up with something cute that means nothing. <laughs> right, and and Twitter has also created this kind of echo chamber that we all exist in, right? Because generally, people who follow us are people who admire us or agree with everything. We're going to say, especially if you're a porn star and you've got fans following you. So a lot of times these girls will come on and they'll say these, frankly, ridiculous things mm -hmm. and their fans will be like, yay, everything yeah. you say is correct. And I'm not even going to look into the situation whatsoever or consider that there may be another side to it or anything like that. I'm just going to, whatever you say is the truth. Yeah. Because I masturbate to you on a regular basis and I'm very lonely. They probably have their dick in their hand as they're typing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Obsessed with hand typing, you know. It's 
My brother was telling me about this book called The Coddling of the American Mind. Have you read it? Oh. I've been planning on reading it, but basically it's this study where I guess uh, these psychologists kind of studied like, you know, past generations versus the new generations and found that the generation, not to like pick on millennials because just because I'm old, but, um, you know, this, this younger generation that kind of grew up with phones, um, how their maturity level is like distinctly like three years behind or something like that. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people don't communicate directly with each other anymore. Mm -hmm. We hide behind phones. We hide behind text messages. We hide behind Snapchat. We hide behind Twitter. Like people don't talk to each other anymore. There's no social interaction. No, like people don't like have a face to face, like Vic said, and actually like have consequences to what they say. Yeah. You know, even if you like had sorry, I don't cut you off. Even if you had like dinner with six people and no one could have their phone, like the amount of like nervous energy would be out of control. Yeah, people they hold on to it like a clutch. You know, I remember a couple of friends saying, you know, in the 15, 20 years ago, if you walked into a bar and you were waiting for somebody, you struck up a conversation with the person next to you mm-hmm. or the bartender. Now you just stare at your phone. Mm-hmm. So interpersonal relationships are definitely getting beaten over this shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that with the inc- skyrocketing rates of anxiety and depression, like people, Suicide. and also too. Yeah. And I think this is why, you know, pl- going back to like work, the platforms, like your Snapchat, only fans, like all that stuff, why people find that it's become so successful because people are craving a connection Mm -hmm. because we've lost that person to person connection. We don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, We're always on our phones. We're always on the internet. So people still crave connection because human beings were gregarious creatures. So they go, you know, on dailybush.com or, you know, Danny's Snapchat and they, you know, even they create this connection with you. Like my webcam audience has changed where I primarily do cam to cam now. I don't do as many, like I do one show just to like appease my fan base. But like after that, it's all one-on-one and everyone just wants to like chat. It's wild. So Mm -hmm. I'm into it. It's so interesting. Like how, you know, technology has, technology has connected us, but yet we're more disconnected and lonelier than we've ever been. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a double-edged sword because there is, there is something that you can hide behind. Mm -hmm. So you're not, I I can't bullshit you face to face as easily as I can with a well-filtered picture on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not really connecting with somebody. You're connecting with whatever bullshit persona it is that they're putting out there. Showing your true self. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like when you talk to somebody in person, you're forced to consider them as a human being. Right. When you talk to their avatar on Twitter, they're not a real person. They're yeah. just like this, these annoying 135 characters, characters that exist in space. Mm-hmm. So. All right, your last question, you ready? Yeah. What's the one question you would want everyone you meet to answer? What do you think of me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> enough about me. What do you think about me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Maybe like what motivates you in life? Like what, what gets you out of the bed in the morning? Like everybody has something that, that they strive for or, or sometimes they don't, you know, Mm -hmm. like what, what is keeping you going? And if there's nothing keeping you going, like, why are you still going? Yeah. Like what's, what's, you, you, something has to be keeping you going. Something, something has, has to, to be going. keeping you going. Yeah. I think to us, just probably because I had to ask myself that question many times, especially like in my drinking days, you know, when it felt hopeless and it felt like I was never going to be able to stop. And I was just always going to be an embarrassment to my family and a mess. And, you know, the person that you like didn't want at the party. Um, I had to ask that question of myself a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I understand. That's it. Those are my 10. You did good. <laughs> Thanks. Did I, did I pass? You get a pass. Pass, fail, class. You get the pass. <laughs> Yay. All right. Well, I'm going to ask you guys some questions, but I'm going to do that separately and I'm going to put it on my Patreon uh, so that people get access to these exclusive Q&As and it encourages people to support me and my podcast because awesome. I want to do more of this stuff and less of working for other people. So yes. into it. 
It was so good to see you guys. What? Should we shameless plug our social? Oh my gosh, yes. How could I forget the shameless plugs? Um, You go first. My my Twitter and Instagram are aka Danny Daniels. Um, My Snapchat is sucking one D. My TikTok is Danny Daniels TikTok. (laughs) Join my OnlyFans, DailyBush.com or DannyDaniels.com, like my OG website. And uh, I think that's it. I don't know. Bye. You know, thanks. Listen to our podcast. Listen to Holly's podcast. Swap it out. Support Holly's podcast. (laughs) Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I just, you just reminded me of a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, Why two onions? Is it because, like, you're multi layered? No, no. My last name means onion in Italian. Yeah. Oh, it does? Or my last name means onion in Italian. Oh, I thought it was like, because you have to, like, peel back the layers because you're, like, so deep and, like, and every time like, you peel back like a layer, that. and every time you peel back a layer, like you cry a little bit, you know. I didn't want to do a sex podcast. Like mm-hmm. I, like I love your, I love the layout, but it's just not what I wanted to do. I didn't want people totally. to think that when they're listening to mine or ours, it is primarily sex. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to have a name that was had nothing sexual about it, and it yeah. was just like a funny thing because we are, you know, technically two onions. So yeah. You know. Oh, okay. Cool. You I'm glad you answered my question. I was very curious about <laughs> so, that. So my shameless, I have one shameless plug. Buy my book on Amazon. Wait for the corn. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask you what the title means or do we have to read the book? You gotta read the book. God damn it. You gotta read the okay, book. but you're Chapter gonna tell me music gives away the title. <laughs> Actually, you know what? To be fair, I could should just buy that on Kindle because I'm about to go away for like four days to a place with no internet. So it, it is available on Kindle and it's a pretty fast weed. So you'll, you'll, you'll get through it pretty quick. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm going to add that to my, I'm going to add that to my list. <laughs> and you guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Holly Randall, support my podcast at patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered, go to Holly Randall unfiltered.com for all the info about my podcast and Thank you guys so much for interviewing me and me interviewing you. And people that are listening because we talked about some of our favorite episodes. What are some of your favorite episodes? Oh, um, let's see. Well, the one that I first did with you is pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, honestly, ultimately, my favorite episode will always be my first one with my parents. Yeah, that was a great episode. Thank that you. Was a really Thank good you. Episode. Yeah, that that was a good one. So that's definitely my favorite one, just because it's my parents and they're so like crazy and wild and. That's perfect um, though, because it's the first one, so people can go listen to that and then just continue down the list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, besides, oh, God, there's so I many my, that I love. Other than than the one you mentioned, and my wife was Francois and Quasar going <laughs> at each other. I was I was walking in New York just laughing out loud with tears in my eyes while listening to the two of them just rip each other to shreds. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, the, oh God. You didn't really say much in that episode. No, <laughs> I just sat there. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I didn't have to do, I just sat there and laughed. It was actually great. I like didn't have to do any work and just watch them both get drunk. They drink. So, uh, the studio that I'm in is not, well, actually we, we lost that studio because of quarantine. We're going to have a new place when we get back into person and person interviews. But, um, that is not like my space. Like a lot of people would ask me, they're like, why is there like a drink cart behind you? If you're an alcoholic, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's not my space. It's not my art. Like it's Ernie's yeah. space. Um, but yeah, so we have a drink cart, um, with bottles of liquor that nobody ever touches exactly. like ever, except for those two. And they finished the whiskey. <laughs> yeah that's a good one and the two of them are really knowledgeable too in between ripping mm-hmm. each other's lungs out <laughs> it was hysterical. yeah totally it's great because it's like it's funny but it's also like very insightful and they both know a lot about you know cinema and um you know francois especially because he did a lot of work in mainstream so mm-hmm. yeah no it's a great episode people really love it mm-hmm. I was going to see you in chat. Yeah, in chat. you too. You too. Thank you guys your, so your much. Glow. And your big pregnancy titties. <laughs> I know. They're so big, dude. I don't <laughs> like, they're, I can't find, like the bras that I find that fit them are like so unattractive. Nothing yeah, fits sure. me anymore. They're so, they're, they're a 36 double D now. Oh, shit. 
Yeah. I was a C before, so they grew like two cup sizes. Wow. Damn. And they're going to get bigger it. once the milk comes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Let's go do the Patreon. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next week. And yeah. yeah thanks, we'll, guys. We'll thanks see you next listening. week. Listen to both podcasts and leave good reviews. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good ending. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.